Some of the stuff that I'm about to tell you has really helped and it's starting to help out on my hamstrings and my quads because I've been implementing these things. It's all about the quality of your work. Boom, boom, big surprise. Not really, because you probably saw us on many other videos, junk volume. There's so much junk volume in a lot of people's training. Even before recently, where I was kind of paying more attention because I was trying to figure out like, how am I not going to failure on certain exercises? Like I'd be able to go to failure on maybe one exercise, but then once I got used to that exercise the week after, I would cut reps and sets short. And I do believe it is more of a mental thing than a physical thing, because if I act like I only have one set to do, then I feel like I could really push myself. That makes sense to a mental state where it's like, okay, time to kill my fucking leg. We're gonna do these hamstring curls to absolute failure because I'm going home after this Versus being like, okay hamstring curls RDLs uh, Straight leg deadlifts more crap. That's gonna like make me feel like puking Why am I gonna make myself feel like puking on the very first set when I can just monitor all my energy? You don't want that especially if you have a lagging body part You don't want your quality of exercise to deteriorate because you have too many exercises because you think you have a lagging body part and because you have a lagging body part you think more is better and you think this on this on this is gonna make your lagging body part better stop doing a ton of volume without the intent of training now if you're like what the fuck does that even mean stop trying to do too much now it's so so easy to fall into the category of thinking you're doing a lot because you have a big exercise list and you're thinking I'm gonna get through all these exercises and by the end of this exercise list there's no chance I have small hamstrings there's no chance I have small biceps let's put into perspective Perspective. Aside from just doing the exercise like in a list format and being completely exhausted because you saved hamstrings for the end of your leg day, it's not going to be an effective workout. It's not just reducing exercise count. It's also changing up the sequence of your exercise and planning around it. So what does that mean? If hamstrings is a weak body part and you have a leg day and you love squatting, you love doing your quads before hamstrings, that could be the problem. That could be the root problem of why your hamstrings are not growing. It's the fact that you never reverse the process. You never start with hamstrings because you're always prioritizing a squat like a powerlifter and I understand that because powerlifting is a legitimate goal to have so say you don't want to eat the squat because you want to keep yourself fresh for a squat you don't want to start with hamstrings because you're like why would I waste energy I need to do my squats fair enough do your squats, but then start with hamstrings. Now don't take that list of like 12 exercises and then stick it on top and then do your quads. You're just gonna have the same problem with a different muscle group. Instead, what you need to do is cut the crap. Literally, cut the crap volume. Cut the crap volume that you think you're not gonna push the exercise that hard because you don't like the exercise, the training tension is not there. You have too many sets, you have too many reps, and you realistically cannot go to failure or you cannot get close to the point where it's like a true RPE 9, 8, 7, where you start to feel that pulsating feeling like you're gonna puke. Because if you do it properly, kind of like the mic Menzer method where you have such a small window to fail. If you train with the intent to really push hard and that you take one of those sets to complete failure or a couple of sets to complete failure, but you only save it for a small window, like one or two exercises, then you move on to another body part, the quality of your gains for that muscle group are, is going to increase. You're also going to liberate a lot of that time that you'd be wasting when you reach a state of junk volume um, allocated to another muscle group. And so it really is a win-win. And I've been doing exactly that when it came to biceps. I've been doing my biceps on my leg days, which didn't really affect my leg day, which is a good thing. Usually I'd save biceps for the end of my back training. Sometimes it'd be hit or miss where I'd feel it. Sometimes it'd be like I'm just exhausted from the back training itself and my biceps are partially worked so when i do biceps there's no training intent and the real motivation to hit that rp like 9 to 10 where it's complete failure my reps just look like this like literally they look like just like this and then i'm like okay i'm not doing that set i'm done and i'm sure a lot of you are feeling the same when you reach a state where you're like exhausted like your whole body is exhausted not just the muscle group and uh, you don't really get a great workout in that body part. And so just junk volume. And so you could separate with frequency. You could separate by cutting out some of the volume. And so it's really easy to address a lagging body part. You just have to make sure you're hitting it enough times in a week, prioritizing it enough times in a workout session. Lastly, you're not doing too much volume. Realistically, you don't need that many exercises if you're training hard. Hope you liked the video. Like, subscribe, comment below. Use code JUSTLY for Transparent Lab products. Use code JUSTLY for Young LA products. Like the superhero shirt. Thank you so much everyone that watched my video. Drop a comment below if you want me to answer another question. Peace out.